Well, hello and welcome to my channel. You know, um, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now. Uh, I've got a lot going on in this week's episode. You know, uh, I've been looking forward to doing uh, Captain Cutler for a while. You know, I've got this really cool kit that I picked up on Etsy at Trucker Doug's Toy Box. It's just fantastic. Uh, I, you know, it's got everything you're going to need to put together your own Captain Cutler from Scooby-Doo. Um, I've also got a couple accessories from Classic TV Toys, like their green S-type body. Now, it doesn't have to be green. Uh, I chose green just because it's going to be under the suit, and if anything pokes out, at least I'll have some continuity of color. So I chose this green. And I also chose their em emerald green jumpsuit and emerald green belt. This is a matching belt. And what I plan on doing is painting um, these pieces to match this suit and um, using that same technique that I've been using in all my Scooby-Doo uh, figures, you know, using a uh, thin uh, shade or wash to accent the, uh, the lines there so it looks like it's been drawn. So that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I've also printed up a base that I'm going to be using. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be using this, but um, I saw this online and it was like a couple bucks. I'll put the link below so you can print out your own if you want to, but I had to have it for my Captain Cutler. And last of all, this is this is the one that's kind of tricky. You know, uh, I got a uh, an airbrush and I have never used an airbrush before. And this is gonna be my first time. I figured it'd be easy because what I wanna do is I want to match this color here. And um, just isn't a lot commercially as far as spray paints are concerned for me to accomplish that. So I'm hoping that I can find a paint at uh, Walmart that will match that. And I can use this not only to prime the piece uh, white and then paint it uh, this seafoam green or this emerald green color right here. Um, but uh, you're gonna have to bear with me. I've never used an airbrush before. I think it's about time that I, I tried it. So today I'm gonna be working on this airbrush and Captain Cutler, and hopefully I can get everything done and uh, have something that um, I'm going to be happy with. So I hope you stick with us. It should be at least uh, entertaining. I, I, like I said, this uh, airbrush thing is new to me, so I'm probably going to make some mistakes. Um, but with that said, uh, hang on tight. All right, I got a couple of pieces that I'm going to try out, and I've got the instructions right here. So let's take a look at those. Okay, well, that's great. Hmm, okay, well, so much for instructions. Let's take a look at this. Let me get this unhooked. Okay, this hose goes into my compressor. That's an easy one. And then I ha it looks like I have some sort of like control here. So let me just make sure that's nice and secure. And then this end will hook in. I'm going to move this over here. This end will hook into my brush. Again, that's a no brainer. Oh, this is for another hose, it looks like. Um, so I think that's it. Let's see if I'm getting any air. Oh yeah. I can feel that. So, looks like that's the nozzle. I think the main control is over here on the, um, on the compressor. Yeah, that's, that's a lot more forceful. So let me do this. Um, I've got some paints. I, I picked this one out. This is called Spring Green. Here, let me grab the, uh, the outfit. And this is a pretty close match to what I have here. You know, this is a little more sea foamy, but you know, I think that's gonna do. I think that'll be fine. So that's gonna be the color of these pieces. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and, I guess, practice and um, and get these things primed with this right here, this this white paint. And to do that, uh, I'm going to take one of these bottles. 
I got these for my wife. I actually went back into her um, into her bathroom and, and grabbed a couple of these. When she used to dye her hair, she doesn't dye it anymore. She's going natural. Um, like uh, Pamela Anderson, right? She, she's not doing the makeup anymore and stuff. So uh, she used to save these little bottles. So I just grabbed one of these. I'm going to put a little water in here. I'm going to do like, I don't know. I'm going to try uh, 30 water, 70% uh, paint in this bottle just to check the consistency because um, there's a little hopper here. And I'm going to dump my paint in there and see how it works to, uh, first of all, uh, I guess prime these pieces. You know, I could prime them with a white spray paint, but I figured I might as well try it with this just to see how it goes. So let me get this set up with a 30, 70 uh, solution of water and paint. I have my paint mixed up. Um, let's check out the consistency. It's really, really runny. It looks like a bloody nose. So let's see. I mean... It's not red, of course, but uh, the same consistency. So let me pop open this hopper. And fill it up. Still have a little more over here so I can add some more as needed. All right, let me flip this on. All right, I'm a little excited. That's amazing. It's just going on with a nice, smooth consistency. I'll we'll have to take a look at it once it's dry. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Ah, let me turn it down a bit. Hmm, splattering. I guess there's like a, a certain setting or pressure that works. It looks like the higher the pressure, the better off you are. But then you blow your, your pieces around. Am I already out? No, not even close. Okay, that's it right there. Look at that. Okay, I noticed that the strokes are, are a lot more, I guess, uh, deliberate than with a paint can. Okay. Oops. This is actually <laughs> kind of fun. Well, that's working out really well. Look at that. So, as far as priming these pieces, not a not a big deal. Pretty easy to do. Oops. Except at this uh, higher rate, you're going to get um, the smaller pieces blowing around a little bit. But that looks pretty good. Let me grab some other pieces.
And this little throttle here works out really, really well. Okay, you can also use the throttle to kind of like um, measure the amount of paint. You pull it all the way back, it's going to come out really, really forcefully. But if you just kind of like go um, halfway, you get a little bit more control. Oh, this is a lot of fun. I'm sure the more I use this too, the, the more comfortable I'll, I'll get. Maybe I can be a little bit more precise. But as far as using this to prime it, it's working out really well. Let me get the other pieces primed and I'll be right back. Okay, I rinsed out the, uh, the brush underneath the sink and now I'm going to go ahead and um, I have some water in here now and I'm just going to clean it out. This is just water in the hopper. And I guess I'll just do it until it's clear. Oh, you know what? Um, let me try rinsing in there first because it looks like... Let me see what would happen if I did that. Yeah, let me rinse in there and then I'll, I'll shoot some water through it. Okay, I have water in the hopper. And you can see I, I kind of rinse that out so it looks a little bit cleaner. And now I'll just do the same thing until the water's clear. And it looks pretty clear. I don't know if you can see that. There's just water coming out now. Oh, hang on. Looks like I hit something that's got some color to it. Okay, that looks clear. Okay, I think this is clean and ready to go. I'm letting these pieces dry. I was able to wash my hands and uh, get that paint taken off pretty easily. So, so far this is a winner. Oop. I'm really liking this airbrush. All right, I've mixed my uh, green paint, same way I mixed my white paint. I'm just gonna pour it into this hopper. And these little bottles are good too because you know it's not going to dry up if i need to um, paint again i can it's right there all right so let me turn it on and i'm gonna do my first coat it looks like i'm gonna have to do a couple of coats on this paint's going on smoothly looking good I think I need to hold it at a certain angle. Oops, this is going to be a problem. I think I'm going to do this in multiple passes just to make sure I get an even coverage. I don't want it to smudge, you know? But you can see it's going on really evenly. 
And even this Walmart paint is working really well with this brush. Okay, that looks like the first coat. Okay, I'm going to come back and do the next coat, but uh, let me check that color. It looks a shade darker than this, but I don't think it's going to really matter all that much. You know, I do have a seafoam green. Maybe if I mix them. Let me put a couple of drops in this, of this in here, and see how that works. Okay, I, I just put a, about four or five drops of this Key West in there, just to kind of bring it to a little bit bluer color. I don't know if it's working yet. It looks a little bit lighter. You know, let me put a couple more drops in there. Let me um, stop this real quick. I'm gonna take my paint. And I'm going to dump it back in here. I'm going to put about four or five more drops in there. Just kind of mixing on the fly. Yeah, put a good squirt in there. So let's see how this works. It'll thicken up the paint too. Hopefully I, I can still spray it. might be too thick now. It's not coming out like it was. Yeah, it might be a little too thick. Um, let me go ahead and add a little water and I'll come right back. Okay, I cleaned it out. Let me add that color. I put a little bit more water in there. See how this works. Oh yeah, okay. Spraying pretty easily now. This is looking like a better color. Let me lay some down and then we'll check it out.
Okay, where's my... That's a lot better. It's still not as sea foamy, but it's a lot closer. I think I'm going to stick with this, and I think I'm going to be fine. So I'm going to let these dry, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to uh, to paint the rest of it. Yeah, this is a, a lot better color. This is a lot closer to what I was looking for. looking really good. I just really can't get over how easy this is. I mean, you know, mixing colors on the fly and getting things covered with the, uh, oops, make sure I didn't ruin it. Getting things covered with your, your right color paint. Okay, so for our first coat, I think I've got it down. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and let it um, let it dry. I'm going to keep the paint in here and hopefully it doesn't clog it up. Something tells me I should probably clean it out, but I'm going to check it out anyway. See how it works. I ended up cleaning out my um, my brush because uh, I had to do something and I didn't want it to, to sit for too long. So let me just add a little bit more of this paint. These little bottles come in handy, I will tell you that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat on here. The more I look at this color, the more I think I got it um, pretty close. Oops. Oops, I can't um, do the palms yet. Okay, well, I think that just about does it. 
I'm thinking now might be a good time to seal these uh, pieces with my matte clear enamel. And the reason being, just because I don't get any chipping and stuff, because the, the finish is pretty thin, you know? And I'm hoping that if I put the, the matte clear enamel on there, it'll kind of like, um, you know, set it. I'll still be able to paint my, uh, my detail. I don't think that'll be a problem. But it looks like the pieces are pretty much covered. I'm gonna go ahead and let them dry and I'm gonna come, well, I'm gonna cover them with my matte clear coat and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna finish painting the detail. All right, I have this uh, Rust-Oleum matte clear enamel and it's got this new nozzle. I ran out of my other one, so I purchased this over at uh, Home Depot. So I'm just gonna give it a little spritz and this will kind of like protect the, the finish that I got there. And it'll let me uh, add the, uh, the detail that I want to in a second or two. So uh, this Rust-Oleum matte clear enamel, great stuff. I'm hoping that it'll keep the paint there so that I can do, um, you know, some touch-ups and uh, add the color of that little seaweed there and do the details in my um, my wash or my, my uh, shade. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'll come back, I'm gonna spritz the other side and get going on the detail. You know, I'm just so impressed with the way that airbrush worked. I mean, it's just incredible, look at that. Just real smooth. You know, I couldn't get that color out of a paint can, but um, I was able to do it with my brush. Next thing I'm working on is I'm trying to add lines to um, to these pieces. I'm, I, I've already done one boot, and I'm using my uh, Nolan's Oil by Citadel. And I'm just taking the tip of my brush, and I'm just running along any lines that I have. I'm trying to be very, very careful with this because, you know, I'll have to do touch up and I'll have to mix that paint again if I make a mistake. But, you know, it's not very difficult to, to stay in the lines here. And um, if you do make a mistake, you can easily get it to, to your faucet or whatever. I'm in my sink, um, I'm in my kitchen right now, so my sink is not too far away. So if I have to, I can just run it to the sink and, and start all over again. Because there's not a lot of lines on this. And, you know, I've already kind of sealed the paint with the, um, the matte clear enamel. So I think I'm good there. boots done. I think before I do this one, <clears throat> let me do the outside first. I'm going to paint the uh, the lenses and I think I'm going to paint those. I oh, already made a mistake. I'm just going to take my brush and kind of like wipe it down. I have a paint here, it's like a light blue, and that's what I'm gonna use for the lenses. But you can see, uh, just kind of tracing those areas out, it's not difficult to do at all. <clears throat> and as far as those, um, those vines, I think I'm gonna wait till uh, the end to paint those. Okay, that's done. And I saw some underneath the, uh, the helmet here. There's a couple of lines. And if you um, do get into those vines, it's not a big deal. We're gonna paint them brown. So you really don't have to worry about messing up too much here.
And you know, um, if you do, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, it's going to be in the water and it might just be some smearing because of the, I don't know, seaweed or something else that's causing that color. I think, oh, I'm almost done. Yeah, something else to cause that color to run, so. Okay. I think that's good. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to put a part over here. I really do think that spending this extra time on these little details <clears throat> is worth it. I've been really uh, impressed on what it's done with my other models for, from Scooby-Doo. See what I mean? It gives that dimension to it. <clears throat> um, I'm going to have to paint the lenses and then I'm going to come back and trace around those. So let me just get another paintbrush. Get something a little bit bigger. And for this, I'm going to be using uh, sky blue. I think it was sky blue in the cartoon. Pretty sure. I may add a wash to this too, like a black wash. Just take your time with it, you know, push the uh, brush into the, the edge of that, I guess, um, portal. We're going to go back and clean it up anyway with the uh, with the wash, you know, to kind of reestablish that line. So unless you really make a big mistake, I don't think it's going to be an issue. See how easy it is just to kind of like get that stuff in there. The paint um, <clears throat> actually adheres very well to this, this um, airbrushed surface. Last one. I think Captain Cutler's my favorite so far. I'd say this one and the Rambling Ghost. Uh, I, that was the first one I did. I think what kind of like, you know, kept me from doing this guy for a while was the cost. You know, the kit on this is kind of expensive. It was like 40 bucks maybe. Okay, so that's that. And then what I'm gonna do next is come in with my black wash and do all those little portholes. I think I'm just gonna do a couple on camera, save the rest for later. Do them off camera, but just to kind of show you what it's going to look like.
So you're just pushing into the, uh, the edges there. So that's what it's going to look like. And again, um, if it's a little sloppy, I think that kind of helps this one. You know, just showing a little streaking, um, you know, like watermarks and things like that. Looks like the top one's still wet. I'll save that one for later, but I'll finish these on camera. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just those little vines, the, the seaweed. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Well, it looks like the top might be done. Maybe I'll just do it all on camera. Hopefully you don't mind. You can always fast forward it. Okay, I'm um, going to go ahead and tackle these vines next. My strand, I'm going to tackle this. I'm just adding some Caliban green for that seaweed. Because I've, I've um, kind of primed it in a brown paint that I had. It's this stuff over here. It's Rust-Oleum's Satin Warm Caramel. And I'm just going to paint these green. There's a lot of them. So I'm going to do that off camera, but I just wanted to show you I'm still working on the base. All right, to paint these vines, um, I'm going to use something called a Rhinox Hide. I started using a paint from my Walmart paints. Uh, I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Um, this Nutmeg Brown, but it wasn't really sticking. So I'm moving over to a Citadel paint because I know I can get it done with one coat and it's going to be a lot easier for me. I won't have to go back and do any touch-ups or anything. So let me cover this part. And you can see it's a nice, dark, rich paint. And I'm just following those um, natural contours of the, of the seaweed. Nothing too fancy. I don't want to have to go back and, and remix some of that paint to, to get that green again. Although it might happen. <clears throat> Look how smooth that is. <clears throat> At this point, any mistakes I think are just going to, uh, to stay there. I may have to make some more paint. Just, I'm very, um, very pleased with the way this came out with the, uh, with the airbrush. And I really don't want to add any paint strokes lines. <clears throat> I guess if I'm just touching it up, it won't be that big of a deal. At least I'm hoping it won't be. Let's see if I can get away without any, any mistakes. I think that might be asking a little too much for me though. Yeah, if I want those clean lines, I'm gonna have to touch it up. So let me get this down <clears throat> and I'll mix up another batch of this paint.
Looking pretty good though. Only hoping that this um this green will cover any mistakes from this dark brown. I think the secret is just trying to run the, the brush along the, the higher ridges or the, the higher portion of these seaweeds and just come back and kind of like hit the sides. Like that. Boy, there's a lot of the seaweed. You know, I'd like to find something that continues that seaweed um, look throughout the body. Because if you remember, he had seaweed dripping off of his um, arms and stuff. I'm going to see what I can find. This uh, surface is really smooth. I, I don't know if you can see this, but it's skipping a little bit because the surface is really smooth. I'm really happy with my um, airbrush. I think it'll work really well for like uh, faces because now I can just paint the, uh, the flesh color onto the face and then do the details. I did have a uh, spray paint that was flesh colored, but I was never really happy with it. So this way I can get whatever I want. Mm. See how I made a mistake, but it just looks like it's part of the, the sculpt because it's kind of raggedy with the, um, with the seaweed anyway. So maybe I'll get away without any touch-ups unless I brush across the face or something. I think we'll have to touch this up over here though. Maybe some floral wire to drape across his arms. This is intricate. <laughs> this has been the hardest part of the, the page up so far. I guess there's a lot that can go wrong, you know?
like I'm almost done with the front part. See what I mean? Where, where you, where I make mistakes here, it's not looking too bad because um, it looks kind of like jagged, like seaweed wood. So it's not a bad thing. I think there might be some areas that I will have to go touch up, but so far I think it's looking pretty good. Even though I am skipping a little bit and and making a little bit of a mess, not much. But you can see how smooth this paint works. It really helps out a lot. I could not imagine going back a couple of times to do this, you know, like two or three times. It would just drive me nuts. So in this case, I think this is where the Citadel shines. Because you can get it in one coat. And I think I'm gonna do the rest off camera. So I don't subject you to this. I'll do this part because it looks like it's going to be one of the most difficult parts. Like getting under it. It's a little tough. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do some touch-ups so you can see what I'm doing there. But overall, I think he's looking pretty good. Now I'm thinking this color is a 50-50 mixture of what I have here with Key West and Spring Green. I'm going to do that 50-50 mixture. Let's see what I get. Yep, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to touch up any areas that I have. Get the brown off of this brush, though. Okay, let's see. You can see I'm just dabbing it where I need to um, to do a little bit of touch up to tighten up the line or um, in most cases just uh, fix a glaring mistake.
think the rest of it looks oh just as I was saying that done now let him dry uh, I got a couple of things to do on my boat over here I got this habit on black and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into those little places that look like they've been um, you know like destroyed or, or broken where they look black right so I'm just gonna paint these areas black Just to kind of fake a shadow, I guess. And then I'm thinking I'll do a little wash and I'll be done with this thing too. The little plants came out well. Maybe a little dry brush uh, with a different color just to kind of like I'll give it like some shading effect. So you see how that's going to look when I'm done. And I've only got a few areas I got to do that with. I got that one. I got the circle up here. I'm excited about doing the circle. Or the oval, I should say. And then this last piece over here. And I think that'll cover this. Then I've just got to do the, um, the beach and the water. And I think this will be done too. But I really do want him to have a, a base, you know? Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna let that dry. Uh, I think I'm gonna add some clear coat to this guy. Oops, let me pull him off. Because I think he's pretty much done. It, there's some rough areas there, I admit, but I think that those just look like, um, you know, part of the seaweed, you know, the. the the rough end is the seaweed so I'm not too concerned about it so let me go ahead and get this part sprayed um, I'm gonna see if I can find something to drape over the rest of them and um, I'll be back hopefully with a completed Captain Captain Cutler okay I'm just finishing up a few things um, I've got this right here this is this Ard code it's like a little gloss um, let me get this out of the way real quick I'm going to um, to use it to highlight this area right here this muddy water you can see I've got quite a a bit done on this uh, model. I'm almost completed. Um, what I did was I used a, uh, a wash, a green wash, on that brown paint and it kind of gave it a muddy appearance because I had that brown in the background and so it, it looks like uh, like swamp water actually. It looks pretty cool. And then I just uh, took my, my plants, painted them green and added some highlights. So this, uh, this little base didn't take a lot of time to do, and uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty excited with the way it's turning out. Just a little bit more. And this just gives it like a little glossy appearance. You can see it in the camera pretty readily. Oops, I'm getting it on my belt. That's the last thing I'm going to do for this figure is to get that belt together. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way this um, 
this this gloss, this glaze or whatever works. I'm gonna have to pick up some more. I actually spilled a bunch of it when I got it. So I'm just kind of using up the last remnants of it. And I will um, definitely be getting some more. All right. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put a couple of drops of glue on this uh, weight. And I'm simply gonna put it right past the buckle here. Oops. These things are tiny to begin with. That looks like a good spot. I just need to make sure that it's um, centered. And then I'm gonna put the other one right next to it. There looks good. And then the last two. I'm gonna give it some room after that, um, that notch. And this stuff dries quickly. Okay, I think I got that one. And then this last one right next to it. Gosh, I'm making a mess. All right, I think that's the weight belt. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna get my figure out and I'm gonna put that on. Uh, that's done too. Boy, things are just coming together now. Wow, that Captain Cutler looks great. Look how smooth that, that paint is on his, on his diving helm and gloves and boots. Man, it's just, I, I I am so glad that I picked up that um, that paintbrush, you know, this this airbrush thing. You know, I hesitated for a while just because, you know, I, I don't know anything about airbrushes. But uh, getting this airbrush is a real game changer for me. I have a bunch of, like, uh, spray cans in the back. And you know, I'm not going to have to buy spray paint anymore because, number one, the reason that I used that, uh, that airbrush on this particular figure was because I couldn't match that paint you know, commercially. I couldn't find anything that would match the, the color of the outfit. And so um, that was the real reason that, that I, I wanted to use that. And number two, you know what? It's gonna allow me to do a lot of different things. Um, you know, every time I have a spray application, like for a uh, priming, I'm just gonna use my airbrush. You know, prime the figure, whatever color, whether it's a, a, a black, a, a white, maybe a combination of the two to get some shadows. It's really going to help me out a lot. So I'm glad I picked up that airbrush. And you know what? It wasn't really that expensive. I mean, yeah, 35 bucks I think it is, is a lot of money, but it's not too much. It's not going to break the bank. And I was spending about 7 to $12 on, on my paint. Metallics, though, I don't know how it's going to work with metallics, but we'll see. I want to use it a lot more, so I'm glad I picked it up. But boy, I am super happy with my Captain Cutler. You know, um, you'll notice a couple of things. I added this twine on there uh, just to kind of continue the the, uh, the vine effect that he had there. I picked up some of this wire, uh, I guess it's floral twine, you know, 
at uh, Hobby Lobby and then just spray painted it uh, brown. I used a, a darker brown than what I used on my um, on my base here. You know, my base came out really well too. You know, so I, I mean, I still have some spray paints and I'll be using them, but um, I think I'm gonna be moving over to a, an airbrush. But look at that, that black wash there really brought out the lines of the, of the wood there. It really came out well. You know, and just spray painting the entire thing brown was a good idea because, you know, I could just put a little green wash in there and I have like a muddy, uh, like riverbank uh, effect. So pretty easy to paint that thing, but really happy with my Captain Cutler. You'll also notice that I, I um, came in here and I adjusted the color of those like vines that were hanging on them, that, that dark seaweed. It was too dark, so I went back and I just put a, uh, a lighter color over it, but I didn't cover the dark lines underneath it. Number one, I mean, it was going to be too hard, I think, and I would go in, I would intrude into the green. But what it did was it gave me the effect of like that hand-drawn look, you know, see the, the darker areas underneath? It looks like um, I actually traced it. So uh, that came out really well too. And that was kind of like an accident. You know, I think that um, adding those little details, a little trace marks on the, on the figure really kind of bring it out. It doesn't look as plain. You can see those on the boots. Nothing I could do about the hands. There's really no, no lines there. But, uh, you know, even on the back here, you can see that's continued. So, gosh, this is, this is a great kit. I, I know it's a little expensive. I think it's like maybe 40 bucks or something, maybe 50. I don't remember what it was. But, um, you know, I enjoy doing these customs and, you know, for me, it's something that uh, that I don't mind spending that little extra money on because I, I, if I can produce something that looks like this and having that airbrush really helped me. So I'm really happy with my Cap Captain Cutler. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Maybe I've encouraged you to get your own uh, airbrush. Uh, I'll put a link to the airbrush that I picked up on eBay um, below. Also, I'll include uh, the link to the uh, kit here. Um, Classic TV toys for the for the outfit. This is just their emerald green jumpsuit. And I think it gives them that phosphorescent look. You know, I haven't, I was looking for my black light and I couldn't find my black light, but I bet you that this guy will glow under a black light. I, I can almost guarantee it because of that color. And the belt looks great. You can't see it that, that well underneath all those vines. But you know, not having to paint a belt and just like using something that's uh, commercial uh, through classic TV toys is a good idea too. All in all, I think this guy's a winner. You know, um, I'm looking at um, at some other kits that are on uh, Trucker Doug's uh, toy box on Etsy. Uh, I'm thinking the Black Knight. Um, there's also, um, gosh, what was the name of that, that space? Gosh, it's like a, that, that, that guy, he would like, um, you know, scream weirdly. What was the name of that guy? Space Kook. Yeah. You know, I'll probably be doing a Space Kook real soon because he was cool. And I've got some ideas for that. I don't know if I can do any lighting effects, but anyway, back to Captain Cutler. Thank you for watching this episode. Um, if you want to try your own Captain Cutler, you know, I think a paintbrush, uh, an airbrush is, is the way to go. I think I could probably get the same thing accomplished with a regular brush, but then I'd have those brush lines and it wouldn't look as smooth. Well, until next time, you guys stay safe and be cool, and I'll see you guys real soon. <laughs> till then, <laughs> bye.